G'day guys, Ken I here again from Skid School. Are you here to do that bloody drifting thing again, eh? Yeah, I'll tell you a story about drifting. One Friday night, I came home in Mikomo. I came on the dirt road, hit the loud pedal, mate, the car just went into skids. You know what saved me from bloody certain death? Manhandling the wheel operation, mate. Couple of right hand downs and, oh, mate, that's drifting. That's bloody drifting, mate. Who lets that guy in? He's just such a weirdo. G'day guys. Welcome to another episode of Advanced Drift Techniques by Labster Media and Drift School WA. So what I'm gonna show you today is just a couple of steering techniques which is gonna help you to have better control of your car whilst drifting. Let's do it. It's common knowledge amongst a lot of drifters that when you need to counter steer, you let the steering wheel go and let it slip through your hands. That's fine, but if you want to have a little bit more predictability in, in your drifting, then there's a couple of things that people don't know that I can show you today. Jump in. Essentially what we're teaching you today is how to be more active on the steering wheel. We're gonna be doing this by using wheel tracing. Um, wheel tracing is something that a lot of drifters already do, but they just don't know it. And a lot of professional drifters as well in drifting competitions to great effect. Uh, what it does for you is it gives you a better line, gives you better angle, better speed as well. So typically these are the three things that are required inside a drifting competition. But really what it's doing, it's, it's giving you better control of your car overall uh, and also giving you more confidence as well. So by having all that, you're going to question your car setup a lot less um, and you're also going to be relying way more on your technique. So what's wheel tracing exactly? It's just a little bit of counter steer where you help the steering a little bit more than what you would normally do. So a lot of the time when you turn in and you're about to counter steer, you let the steering wheel spin through your hands and then that's what happens. It gets to whatever sort of lock that you want it to and then you just adjust from there. But with wheel tracing, what you're trying to achieve is you're turning and you have to pull it back yourself. So this kind of encourages the car to start counter steering a little bit quicker and you're letting it go around in this section here. So you let it go, it spins a little bit, then you catch it again. And when you catch it, that's when you pull the rest of the counter steer. So by doing that, it puts your hands or arms in a position of nine and three. So nine and three is always the best because it gives you the best sort of range when you want to turn in and turn out. So you need to be able to have that ability when you're uh, adjusting your line or if you're chasing someone, or if you need to avoid a hazard, it's no good if you have let the steering wheel stop at a certain point, and then you've adjusted with your hands and your hands are crossed up. So you're doing all this so that you can avoid that sort of uh, scenario, because you need to be a bit flexible and be able to react to everything at all times when you're drifting. So if you're crossed up, then you've got nowhere else to go, or if you're in a bad position, then this isn't exactly where your arms want to be when you're trying to adjust something. So obviously being here is where you've got the best range of motion. So these are, this is some simple differences of if you're just letting the steering wheel go all the time, um, how you can get into a position where you might not be able to react as well. So this is uh, an example of letting the steering wheel go. So you do that, let the steering wheel go, and then let's say you need to counter steer more then you get into a position where you're crossed up. So that's not what you want. So we always want to end up in the nine and three position. So this is what you'll do or what will happen if you get in, do wheel tracing. So turn in, flick your back, get your hand over there, and then you pull the rest back. So by having a nine and three, uh, you're in full control of your drift and you're able to react where you needed to go from there. 
that. So we'll just go off and uh, give a demonstration. So in this one we've got three different uh, courses or corners. So each corner is what you typically find on a, on a race course or a track, whatever. Um, number one is going to be one that opens up. Uh, from these are all coming out of transitions obviously so number one is when it opens up number two is just when you have a, a harder turn so it's like a hard left or a hard right and the third one is you're transitioning into a hairpin so the key points when doing wheel tracing uh, and transitioning is your we're, we're going to be doing a left hand transition this time so i'm only going to just talk about my right hand okay obviously it's opposite if you're going to be doing a right hand transition but when we go on the left hand transition, how much my arm moves through this range here is pretty much what decides how much angle you're going to get. So on number one where the corner opens up a lot more, I don't need to really like do a whole lot other than that and then get into the counter steer straight away. So the quicker you counter steer at that point, the less angle you're going to get because which is what you want for a corner that opens up a lot more because uh, you're trying to keep speed. If you put a lot of angle into a corner that opens up, obviously you're gonna be slow uh, and you won't hold your speed. So then the number two, where it's a, like a harder turn, then obviously I need to turn a little bit harder and hold a little bit longer, and then counter steer from there accordingly. And then in the last one with the hairpin, we're obviously looking to achieve a lot more angle because we need to come back around 180 degrees. I obviously have to turn quite a bit more. So we'll do a demonstration now and then you'll be able to see. So when you're nine and three, I was able to sort of control every single aspect of the drift that I'm going to do. So whatever I needed to happen right after that, uh, I can make it happen. So we're going to go for number two now. again uh, you can see that my arm moved to about here and we just had to wait a little bit longer so that the car could rotate then we can make it through that harder turn so finally we're going to go up to the, th um, the third one now which is the hairpin we have to turn a lot harder and we're also going to have to wait a little bit longer so that we can get the, uh, the required amount of angle that we need which is 180 degrees because we're going to come back around <laughs> So the main thing with wheel tracing and drifting itself is obviously practice. So one of the things that I'd recommend if you want to practice more wheel tracing is jacking the car up on the front so that you can actually turn the wheels left and right uh, and you don't even have to go drifting to actually practice it. Um, you can practice your push-pull method, so getting that right motion uh, with your right or left hand so that when you actually go out in the track next time you're not all confused and you're fumbling around trying to figure out this new technique you're actually a little bit more comfortable with it. If you watched the video and uh, you followed a lot of the stuff, then I think I'd be, I'd be pretty confident that you have a better time drifting next time with more control uh, and relying more on your actual technique. So if, if it helped you, then please like our video. And if you've got any other friends that also drift as well, give them a share so that they can see it too. Uh, maybe it'll help everyone, but either way, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.